Did you hear they recently added the word hangry to the dictionary? It describes that feeling of being so hungry, you're angry. Who guessed that? A lot of hangriers out there? Some very honest people, thank you for that. We'll talk about that a little bit. Well, the word hangry got me thinking about food and our emotional relationship with it. Nowadays, we overprocess what we eat. We overindulge in it, and then we come to resent it. Too often, we're filling up and being left empty all at the same time. So today, we're building a healthier relationship with food so you can use it to nourish both your body and your soul. So here's what's coming up on the show. First off, we're going to start with grandma's chicken. I'm talking about chicken soup, fried chicken, all the good stuff. We finally remember it. But why doesn't chicken taste like it used to? In our Food Truth series, we're taking you all the way to an Indian chicken farm to find out. And in our Truth Tube, we have a plan for everyone out there who eats their feelings. Because guess what? It does not have to be a bad thing. And we're building a better relationship with food by giving you the foods that can help you break your bad mood. You all ready for this? Yeah. Oh. All right. Let's get started with our new Food Truth series because you have the right to ask questions and know exactly what you're putting in your body. So I've asked one of my core team experts, award-winning journalist and author of The Dorito Effect, Mark Chasker, to go on the road to find out the truth about what we're really eating, starting with the question, why doesn't chicken taste like it used to? Chicken these days, doesn't taste the way it used to. The question is why? What happened to chicken? Why does it taste so bland? To find out, I headed to a 200-acre farm in Indiana run by my friend, Pete Eshelman. How you doing? Good to see you. Yeah. Great. Okay, Pete, tell me, why doesn't chicken taste the way it used to? When I buy chicken, it is the blandest meat. It tastes like wet paper towel. <laughs> what, what's going on? Simply, chickens are not raised like this. They're out uh, all natural, on grass, eating bugs. They're harvested around 14, 16 weeks versus six weeks. That's the difference. So you're, you're saying, the fact that these chickens live outside on pasture eating the stuff and they grow more slowly, that makes them taste better. Absolutely. So if most chickens today don't live on farms like Pete's, where do they live? I set off to find a modern day chicken farm. There's one, but it looks more like a factory than it does a farm. And something tells me it's not open for tours. Inside, there may be as many as 25,000 birds and they spend their entire lives not doing much of anything other than eating. But just what are they eating? To find out, I'm gonna check out this local feed store. Tell me, what's in modern day chicken feed? Basically, you got corn for your calories here, soybean meal for protein, and then the vitamins and trace mineral mix. So would you say then that this food is designed to make chickens grow big and fast? Basically, the, the diet is always designed, I would say, for chickens to grow faster. You've heard the expression, you are what you eat? What about chickens? Well, there's some debate on this, but certain scientific studies show that the flavor of chicken is influenced by what chickens eat. And if chickens grow up never eating bugs or grass and only ever eating bland feed made from corn and soybeans, that's how the chickens taste, bland. I had one more stop to make to find out why chicken these days tastes so boring. Greg. Hi, Mark. Greg Welcome Gunthorpe runs a chicken processing plant that supplies some of Chicago's best chefs. So Greg, if I think chicken tastes like tap water, it's not my imagination. It's not your imagination at all. Most commercial chicken is soaked in bleach water for about 90 minutes in a large automated chiller. And how does that affect the flavor? Uh, it washes out a lot of the flavor. To maintain flavor, Greg avoids water. Instead, he air chills his chickens inside this refrigerator. These chickens, when they cool like this in a fridge, they taste better, they taste less watery, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah they're, you know, the you can wash some of the flavor out by chilling them right. in water. It would be like taking a ham sandwich and dunking it in water. Right, exactly. Yeah. All this talk of bland chicken was making me hungry for the real thing. So I decided to go back to Pete's farm to see what a slow-growing, pasture-raised, air-chilled chicken actually tastes like. This is a the moment of truth, try my chicken. Oh my God, it actually tastes like chicken. The Mars Jordi has that chicken looked absolutely delicious. So what did grandma's chicken taste like? Um, it tastes more like chicken. I know that sounds odd, so let me put it this way. It was savory, it had a deep savoriness, it had a butteriness. It tasted like it was cooked with herbs, even though it wasn't. 
But we say everything tastes like chicken. But this is what real chicken should yeah, taste like. Yeah, once upon a time, chicken actually tastes like chicken. <laughs> All right. So I'm a little stunned by the size issues. Let's get to that. When I go shopping at you know, these wholesale clubs, they are big chickens that I usually buy. Yet you argue that's not the whole story. Yeah, let's look at these two chickens because they tell us a lot about what has happened to chicken. This is the chicken we saw in Indiana, the pastured, slow-growing chicken, the one that was out there in the fields eating the bugs, eating the grass. This is a chicken you'd find at a supermarket, maybe a restaurant. You can see how we've changed the chicken. But here's the most interesting thing. This chicken took 14 weeks to raise. This one only took six weeks to raise, and it's 50% bigger. It's a baby. Uh, researchers say if a human baby grew as fast as, as a modern chicken, at two months it would weigh 660 pounds. 660 pounds? Big baby. Yeah, and that's what we're eating. This is like a couch potato chicken. Look, it's all splayed out there. It's flattened, it deserves a beer here in its wing. That's a big difference. So the question then, of course, is how do we end up with today's chicken? How did it all happen? So come on back, let's tell this little story. So let's go back a few generations. Likely, chicken would be living on a small farm here in a rural area. Chicken would take a long time to grow, as you mentioned, maybe 14 weeks or who knows, in that range. And it was much smaller. It was about three pounds, three pounds, itty bitty little thing. And here's the big story, everybody. Chicken wasn't something you ate all the time. Chicken was a very special occasion product. You'd only celebrate with chicken. So what happened to change all this? Very simply, World War II. Red meat was being rationed, it was being sent to GIs overseas, and the folks back home started eating a lot more chicken. This was great news for the chicken industry, but they said, what's gonna happen when the war ends? How are we gonna keep people eating chicken? So a big supermarket commissioned the Chicken of Tomorrow contest, and farmers all over the country competed to see who could grow the fastest growing they really chicken. They called that Chicken of Tomorrow contest? It was contest? called the Chicken of Tomorrow contest. There was a Chicken of Tomorrow queen. There was. There was. Is that related to today's chickens? Uh, indirectly, absolutely. The, the chicken that won that contest grew about two weeks faster. It was plump, two weeks faster than all the other chickens, and a light bulb went off. The chicken industry realized we can breed chickens to grow faster, and they haven't stopped. It was at about 12 weeks in 1948. By the 1970s, chickens were at about eight and a half weeks. This opened the door to fast food chicken. Buckets of chicken, chicken strips, chicken nuggets. It hasn't stopped. Chicken is our number one protein. It's cheap, it's abundant. We eat 30 billion pounds of it a year. It's a lot of chicken. A lot of chicken. All from those innovations 50 yep. years ago. So let's talk about the health ramifications of this. Does it make a big difference if it's a pasture chickens you were showing us, or, or you know, the, these heritage chickens, I guess, which are descendants from the original ones, or the modern day big baby yes. ones? You are what you eat, and the same is true with chickens. There's a lot of omega-3s in grass. We know omega-3s are healthy, but here's what's really interesting. When a chicken eats those omega-3s in grass, those are simple omega-3s. The chicken converts them to complex omega-3s. You've probably heard of it, DHA. This is the fatty acid we're told to eat salmon and mackerel to get. Well, you can get them in chicken. We could be getting that in our number one meat. I never knew that. It would change everything if we could actually get these healthy omega-3s that our brain needs from things like chicken, which are relatively abundant. So I thought it was only fair to reach out to the National Chicken Council for their reaction. Here's what they said in part, and it's very rational. It says, whether it is traditional chicken, organic, or free range, consumers have the ability to choose products that take into account many factors, including taste preference, personal values, and affordability. The ability to perceive a flavor difference doesn't imply one is better than the other. Uh, they are right. By the way, the full statement on DrOz.com, it's up to you. It is about choice in this country. You have the choice, and we're showing you different options. So I've got a million more questions about these heritage and pasture chickens and all the other ones you might be talking about, like organic. So we're going to get going to find out where you can find these healthy versions and everything else you want to know about these chickens that's coming up next.